great to be back into this side of the world. I'm going to explain a little bit about myself, where, I'm com where I came from. Uh, I was born in Hong Kong, and I grew up in Macau. And uh, then I decided that my family decided that uh, I needed to get some Western education. So we went to the States. And in my undergraduate degree, I studied biology. I thought I was going to be a doctor, like a lot of Asian you know, kids. Uh, that didn't happen. That, I failed miserably, and my, my, my parents and my mom was just really disappointed. So uh, then I, I shift. I decided that I'm going to study design and architecture. And while I was there, I did my thesis. And part of my thesis is, was that I was looking at uh, Industrial Revolution and the aftermath of Industrial Revolution. And I've noticed that, you know, we all know by now that what happened afterwards, right? We were, you know, producing mass productions, uh, machine lines. We were producing things over and over and over again, cookie cutter effects. And that affected our office environment and our way of working. But it also affected our schools and the way we teach our children. We were repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again. So I started asking myself, well, a change is imminent. We have to do something about it. I know, but how? What? Where? Where do we start? So after I graduated, I started looking into ways of incorporating these changes into the way we work, the way we study, and the way we live. And I came up with these four sort of what I call shifts towards these changes. So the first one was that if it was in the pre sort of time in the, in the industrial revolution age when we were doing mass production, what if we shift and think about mass customization? Give them the tools, give them you know, the methods, and each one of you will produce something different instead of having this cookie cutting kind of method of producing the same thing over and over again. What if we start changing our mentality and instead of saying, you know, so focused into the result, so focused into the end product, why don't we shift and think about the process? Think about the experience, think about uh, how we, the, the, the way, the journey of making things. And what if we shift? Let's, let's just stop thinking about, you know, this top-down approach, this top-down hierarchy where we have a boss, we have you know, workers, and we have you know, the, the lower rank. What if we all are equal? Professors, students, employees, boss. What, what if we're all equal? That would be ideal. And what, what if we you know, shift from being so formal all the time? And, and let's just be informal. Have an, a really informal environment where we can all work together, where we can all study together, where we can have a surprise discovery, where serendipity can occur. And so I really wanted to apply this you know, philosophy somewhere. And in 2010, I had the opportunity to, to set up MOB, uh, Makers of Barcelona. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the making of it. So this is my definition of what MOB is. And MOB is a thousand square meter of pure goodness, plus a community of the creative geeks, the innovative hipsters, and the business savvy. So I'm trying to mix things up. You know, all three groups are together in the same space. And so when I'm talking about the creative geeks, I'm talking about designers, the artists, the in innovative hipsters are the hackers and the inventors, the business savvy, so I'm talking about the startups and the entrepreneurs. So what is a maker? For me, a maker is someone that is self-sufficient someone that is passionately driven, fully capable, and highly motivated. So I'm not just talking about people making things and you know, like, you know, just making products. No, anyone, everyone here is a maker. Shift of mentality. Everyone is capable. So for us, someone, a maker is someone that can make things happen for themselves. So that's, that's basically everybody, right? So this is my prototype of a maker. It has teeth. It's feisty. <laughs> so at Mob, um, we have a facility of 1,000 square meter. And inside, we have co-working. We have classrooms. We have exhibitions. And we have event space. So this is some of, uh, some of the pictures, images of our makers hard at work. These are our students. Sometimes they're not so hard at work, but they're in the same space with the professionals. 
This is our caged meeting room, very informal. Here's the lounge and Ugo working very hard. We also want to provide tools and these tools could be literal tools, places where people can make stuff. We're actually right in the middle of working in a maker space where we would have digital fabrication, sewing machines, uh, vinyl cutter, where people can actually produce. We want to provide content, so we do a lot of workshops, exhibitions, hackathons, performances, theaters. So this is our event wall. We list all of our activities that we do during the month. Some of the examples of exhibitions that we have done. We do startup launch party. Hackathons where people get together and hack things. Art supermarkets where we sell Barcelona design products showcasing our maker's design. Concerts. And this is a project that is in the making. We're, co uh, we're collaborating with another organization what, we were, what, 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 what we're trying to do is match up uh, improbable occurrences. So we're trying to match up designers and hackers and see what can be produced with, with, within these two marriages. We'll see how that goes. We also collaborate a lot with external organizations. So we've, we've worked with Firefox, we've worked with Etsy to, do, to run their events. And finally, the most important part is the creative community. We are very proud to have over 120 members within this one year, first year of uh, operation. We have about 50% local people and 50% of international. And we push very hard to create an environment where the professionals and the, and the students are at the same space. So this is our crowd. And on top of this 120 sort of in-house members, we also have over 3,000 virtual ones. So we're trying to build up this community where people can come together there's a meetup space, they can do projects together, and they can collaborate. So how do, how, do, how do we grow a creative community? I'm gonna give you some instructions. Well, some of the experience that I've learned so far in this year and a half. The person who runs this community, this creative community, is the one. You're gonna be the heart and soul of the community. Your aura is going to be felt. You're going to be heard everywhere. So you better be passionate about what you do. Okay? You have to actively recruit all those members, those movers and shakers in your community. All those people that are interested to participate. Include them. Include them as part of your community. You're going to reach out. There are tons and tons of people doing amazing things in the city, I'm sure. Not just in Taipei, and I'm sure across the ocean, across the other country. Find those people, bring them in. Connect. Connect to big corporations. You would think that they would never listen to individual small communities like this. But grow your community and they will want to hear your voice. Give incentives to your members to start their own initiatives. It's very important because they will, they will then provide the content for your community. Grow your community by member through the, your internal and external events that we have talked about earlier. So whether it's concerts for, for your internal members or big events like a hackathon where you invite corporations. These are your content. It's sort of like your food for your community and it's very important. Family matters. Your members are going to be your family, and they will be your voice. And if you treat them right, they're going to be loving you, and they're going to tell everyone about it, and your community will grow. You got to work it. This isn't a free ride. So you're going to have to work it. Your members are your family, remembered? And you got to promote it. Talk it up. You know, tell other people about your members. Oh, have you heard of so-and-so? He's amazing. And do you know so-and-so? He is just fantastic. And finally, oh, I think there's another point. So um, you need to communicate. You need to, if you're doing great things and you're not talking about it, then it's kind of a lost case, right? So tell other people. Do a Facebook campaign. Do have a wonderful website. Tell the whole entire world the content of your, of your member and the, the content of your community. 
and you got to be the, the pimp. <laughs> I don't know if this is translating it right. Be the pimp. You have to connect people. You have to put people together within the community and outside of the community. This is 99% of my job at Mob. Because if within, without these kinds of interactions, your community isn't going to grow, right? Collaboration is key. So how do, you, how do we apply this in a larger scale, right? Like I said earlier, there are tons and tons of very creative and very talented people all over the city, but they're all kind of you know, fragmented and they're all over the place and they don't really talk to each other. What if we start applying these communities? Why don't we just start growing these communities all, all over the place? And you start making connections between them. And you, if you apply this in the city level, in the neighborhood level, and the, in the global level, you can actually connect to the whole entire world. And that's pretty amazing. And if you guys build one and we started communicate with you guys, you're going to have a link between Barcelona and Taipei. That's pretty cool. So if we go back into the four sort of philosophy or the, the shifts that I talked about earlier, that was just our sort of way of working, right? And we really wanted to apply this methodologies, not only at MOB, not, not only at a facility. What if we can apply this in another project? So we got very lucky this year. We're working with the city government of Barcelona. And uh, it's a very initial, you know, we just started about a couple of weeks ago. But uh, we wanted to regenerate the city, the, the, uh, the neighborhood at MOB. And we said, well, how are we going to approach this? We're not urban designers. You know, I, I studied architecture, but I, I, mean, I don't know anything, anything about urban planning. So we said, well, why don't we just tap into the resources? Why don't we talk to all of our MOB members? We have 120 of them and see what we can do. So we got everyone together and we started to brain, have a brainstorming session. And we came up with this kind of an idea. We brought a mathematician in, we brought a physicist in, we have hackers, we had designers, and we all started talking about how to approach this project. And we decided that we wanted an algorithm. We wanted to provi provide a tool, not the final product, but sort of like a formula on how to approach the design of the city. And we, we said that we're going to design the city through an organic, a fluid, and human-centered way. So if you, when you see this kind of video, this very short video, it shows you that you know, we're trying to incorporate the parameters, the data, the open data that we get from the city. And so every time, say, for example, someone opened a shop, that map will alter instantly. And it's a live organism that gets changed depending on what information is being applied on. And so we wanted to use this tool not just for Barcelona, not just for you know, a particular place in time. We wanted to be able to see the changes in a very dynamic way so that urban planners, designers, architects, and anyone else who wanted to use this tool to rethink about what the future of the city is like can use it. So it's very exciting for us to start this project with the city, and it's very interesting for us to see that the city has interest in initiatives like this. So, to go back in the question, we know about the changes about to happen, this question of what's next. My answer to that is all of you to become a maker, to start your initiative, and to grow your own community. Thank you.